hello and welcome back. Uh, some students have been asking me about what happens in when you have an adiabatic process in for a system and the pressure is atmospheric outside. Uh, I thought I will maybe discuss that because there seem to be some misconceptions uh, with respect to that. So let us say I have a system of this kind. So I have a piston which has some mass. I have some gas. Let us say this is insulated. So there are a couple of cases which are possible. One is that this system can be in equilibrium. So if this system is in equilibrium, then what we see is because this is adiabatic and let us say the piston also is insulated, so no heat transfer is possible. So we can write the first law for the system uh, which we will get as say dE is del Q minus del W and this is 0. So we can see that dE will be equal to um, del minus del W if this does any work. But the question is that will this do any work? So if this is initially at equilibrium, then let us say the piston has a mass of uh, mp. So we can see for this gas here, uh, let us say this pressure here is atmospheric, the pressure inside is say p. So what we can see is in order that this is in equilibrium, so p atmosphere is acting downwards, the weight of this piston is also acting downwards, this pressure inside p is acting upwards. So if this must be in equilibrium, then p atmosphere, if I take balance of forces into area of the piston that is acting downwards plus mass of the piston into acceleration due to gravity is acting downwards must be equal to the pressure inside into the area of the piston acting upwards, okay. And this must be true at all the times if it is in equilibrium. So initially if this is in equilibrium, then this is the case and we can find out the pressure inside. So we get this must be P atmospheric plus mass into acceleration due to gravity divided by area of the piston. So if I have this kind of a case where this is completely adiabatic and it is initially in equilibrium, what we see is that this will be the pressure inside. The atmospheric pressure outside does not change, mass of the piston is constant, acceleration due to gravity is constant and area of the piston is, is also constant which means that if this is in this situation, this piston will not move. So if you really think about this kind of a case, it will not move. Therefore there will not be any work interaction because there is no heat interaction. Therefore there will not be any work interaction. This is a stable configuration and it will remain this way. So in this kind of a case, actually the piston will not move and therefore uh, if you left it like this, it will be in equilibrium. Now if by applying some other force we make this piston move, then we know we can calculate what the work would be. So now in order to make it move, there has to be some other force which is there. So let us say we have the same configuration again, but in this case we apply some external force. Of course the force can be either upwards or downwards. So if I apply a force downwards. Then I can compress this adiabatically, but what we see is initially the force I need to start compression is essentially very slightly higher than this because the pressure inside is this. So I need a force which is area times this pressure in order to start compressing. As I start compressing, if I have an ideal gas or something like that, the pressure inside will increase. So as soon as I have compressed this and now the piston instead of this position, let us say the piston has now come to this position, the pressure inside has gone up. So I need a higher force to compress it after it moves a small distance of del x. I will need a higher force and then I can move it to another distance of a little one more del x and then the force needs to go higher and so on. So this force cannot be a constant force. If I need to compress this adiabatically, the force and if I want to do this quasi statically, this force has to keep increasing if I am compressing. In a similar fashion, if I was to try to pull this out in an adiabatic process, 
in a quasi static adiabatic process initially for pulling it out I need a certain amount of force which is essentially given as this P into area. As soon as it starts moving a little more then the volume inside has changed and the pressure volume relationship is also there. So because of which the force which I need will keep changing. So that is something which we see. So I cannot do this kind of an adiabatic process if it is initially in equilibrium and I want the process to be quasi static. I cannot do this by pulling it up or down with a constant force. I need to have a force which is varying. Now the brings us to the third case where I have this piston cylinder arrangement. Let us say it is interrelated. But in this case, let us say I had already pushed this down, the pressure has became high and then I clamped this piston with a pin. So in this case, what we see is this equation here does not hold because this pin is providing extra force to hold this. So the pressure here can be very high or it can also be very low. But what the point is that it is not in equilibrium by the weight and atmospheric pressure alone. There is an extra force which is provided by this pin which is holding it in place. So now if I release this pin, this piston will move up or down depending on what the pressure here is. So if this pressure here is initially higher, this piston will start moving up. But the problem with this kind of a case we should keep in mind is that this process is not going to be quasi static. So this is not a quasi static process because this is not a quasi static process we cannot do integral of PdV of the pressure inside because this is only valid for quasi static processes and this process is not quasi static. The piston will actually accelerate, it is not in equilibrium anymore and therefore this kind of expression will not hold. So if this pressure was much higher than equilibrium pressure, so let us say, uh, let me call this as some P1 or this is let me say P equilibrium. So supposing my P1 here was much higher than P equilibrium and it was being held by this pin, then the moment I release this pin, this piston is going to accelerate and start moving upwards. So that kind of a process is definitely not quasi static. So if it is not quasi static, this will not hold because this is only valid we have been saying that it has to be near the equilibrium processes quasi static frictionless and so on and only in that kind of case this is valid. So for this kind of a case it will not be valid. So then the question is how do we calculate what is the work done. So uh, in reality we do not we cannot calculate this work very accurately but there are certain assumptions we can do. So in this case what we can for example assume is that the pressure here is atmospheric far away which is possibly a good assumption anyway. But what we can assume with a little bit of error is that the pressure here also remains atmospheric. We know that this is not very strictly true because if the piston is accelerating, if the piston is moving upwards really fast then we know that the pressure on the top surface of the piston will be slightly higher than atmospheric. But since the atmosphere is very large and we do not have any other better way of calculating this, what we can do is assume that the pressure here is atmospheric. We know that the mass into acceleration due to gravity of this piston is also constant. So the that part of the work we know we can definitely calculate. So what we will do in all of these cases is to see that the work done, we can calculate the work done for the external part. Internally we do not know what it is but for the external part we can do. So what we will do in this case is to find out the work done for the surroundings which is the external force into dx integral or essentially the external pressure into dv for the surroundings. This part we can calculate. So this external force over here is whatever we had earlier uh, or if you say external pressure, external pressure is essentially atmospheric pressure plus mass of the piston into acceleration due to gravity by A. So this part 
we know of course we are assuming that pressure here remains atmospheric which is also something we are uh, which is not strictly true but it is fairly true and it is anyway much better than assuming that the pressure inside uh, is some particular value because the pressure inside is changing a lot pressure outside is going to be more or less atmospheric unless this is moving extremely fast of course if it's really moving like a close to sonic speeds and so on all of this is not going to work because we are only dealing with equilibrium systems or near equilibrium systems but if it is moving fairly fast but not too fast this is still all right so this will be our external pressure into the change in volume of course if i take the change in volume of the surroundings this is the surroundings are becoming smaller this will be negative but if i take the change in volume of the system and take this value it will give me 1w2 of the system so if this is positive then this will also be positive it's i find out the value of work uh, done by this system during its expansion uh, you will recollect that we had at some point of time in this class discussed about uh, for example a person jumping off from a plane you know pa a paratrooper jumps from a plane initially the person we said uh, does not deploy the parachute it drops in free fall for a while we said if you ignore air viscosity then the work interaction while this person drops for example let's say a height of say 10 meters uh, we have some weight for this person let's say he's about 60 kg and about acceleration due to gravity is about 10 so it's about 600 newtons is the weight and the person falls by 10 meters and we said that this work interaction is approximately equal to 0 it is 0 if you ignore all uh, air resistance there is some amount of air resistance it's not very small sorry it's not very large it's typically pretty small so this work is interaction is almost 0 and then we said that the person deploys a parachute okay but the parachute is not able to it is not the person is still uh, starting to decelerate but person is not at constant velocity so we have some amount of air resistance so we said that in this kind of a case we see 600 newtons is downwards and let us see supposing this parachute provides a resistance of say 100 newtons or say 200 newtons then we said that the work interaction is due to whatever is this smaller force the external force the smaller one so we said that it's supposing this person now drops 10 meters with this we said the work interaction would be essentially 200 into this 10 not the 600 because the person is still accelerating but some amount of resistance is there so we say whatever is due to that resistance we have work interaction and then we said the third case we said if the person is fully in equilibrium due to the parachute being fully deployed so then the 600 newtons of resistance uh, upwards due to the parachute and 600 newtons downwards due to the weight and the person is drifting and then we said any distance which the person drops like this you will have the full uh, contribution of the work so this is what we said earlier in the same fashion what we see in this previous case is that when this is accelerating like this it is not fully resisted only partially it is resisted it is resisted to the extent that there is some force outside resisting it the force outside resisting it is due to atmospheric pressure and due to the weight those are the ones resisting the expansion of the system so the amount of work which will be done if this is not in equilibrium is to the extent that it is being resisted only this much is being resisted therefore only this much work would be done if on the other hand the pressure outside was changing so instead of this kind of a case if i now take for example a different kind of a case where i have for example a piston cylinder arrangement of this kind let's say i am insulating one end of it and I heat this for example the piston is also insulating the pressure here will increase and let's say it's initially at equilibrium the pressure here will increase and it will push it up so this kind of a process is completely resisted 
So initially it's at equilibrium, which means if I have some pressure of A here and pressure of B here, and I have some mass for this, uh, this is not a pin, I have some mass for this. So then what I can say is pressure A into area of the piston is acting downwards, mass of the piston into G is acting downwards. This must be equal to say pressure of B into area of the piston acting upwards. So this is initially at equilibrium. So if I now start to heat this, I know the pressure here will increase. So this PB will keep going up. Because this pressure at B goes up, the pressure of this will start moving this piston upwards, reducing the volume, which means the pressure at A also will go up and I can have net work done on this system A by the system B by this moving up. In this kind of a case, if you slowly heat it, this will be fully resistant. I can calculate in this kind of a case, the work either is containing system A or work considering system B, one will be the negative of the other. So because this kind of a case, it will be fully resisted kind of work. So what we are generally trying to emphasize here is, we can only calculate work for in the way we are doing it for quasi-static processes. If it is quasi-static, it has to be near equilibrium, it has to be a slow process. In processes where you have unrestrained expansion or free expansion or so on, you have work interaction only to the extent that there is resistance. So if there is only some amount of resistance due to an external force, you have work due to that amount of resistance only. We do not have complete, you cannot take integral of PDV and find out work. Of course, one of the things is that we will not even in these cases know the exact process. We do not know the pressure and volume at any given time. You can find out the volume. The pressure at different points in this are not the same because it is expanding fast. The pressure here will be lower than the pressure somewhere else. So we do not know the pressure completely of the system. We cannot plot the PV diagram. We cannot integrate using this, uh, this kind of formula. Okay, so that's something which I want to emphasize.